Let's talk depth. Depth is an essential but often overlooked feature of great eye-level product and food photos. It's perceived when your subject, aka the thing you're photographing, is in sharp focus and your background is out of focus. Believe it or not, depth is often what makes your customers or viewers stop and take notice of whatever it is that you create, whether it's your products, recipes, or handmade creations. And the best part? You can create depth with a DSLR or an iPhone camera. So let's do it. Let's go in-depth about depth. All right guys, Mandy of Replica Surface is here. In this video, we are talking all about depth and how to achieve it with any camera. To understand what I mean about depth, notice how in this photo, the objects and the background are both in focus. The photo looks flat. Same thing here with a food photo. The fact that everything is in sharp focus makes the photo feel eh. Contrast that with these photos where the subjects are in focus, but the background is blurred. Notice that we purposely put the milk bottle in the background to keep it out of focus. That's depth, and that's what draws your viewer towards your subject. I'll put both photos side by side so you can really see the difference. No matter what camera you use, the goal when shooting at eye level or at a 45 degree angle is to keep your subject in focus and your background out of focus. And when I say background, I mean everything behind your main subject. That includes the vertical backdrop and any styling props you choose to place behind the subject, like we did with the milk bottle. To make this happen, we have to consider two things, subject positioning and camera settings. A common mistake is to place your subject directly in front of your vertical backdrop. When you do this, you can't blur the background and you eliminate that gorgeous depth. What you want to do is position your subject in the center of your horizontal surface, as far forward as you can, without the front edge of the surface showing, of course. You want some space between the background and the subject. Place any background props close to the vertical backdrop to keep them out of focus, if you want to include them. Now that you've positioned your props perfectly, it's all about your camera settings. If you use a DSLR camera, just keep watching this video. If you're all about your iPhone camera though, and you really don't care about words like f-stop and aperture, you can scroll ahead to the four minute, 20 second mark. Creating depth with a DSLR camera is all about your aperture, shutter speed, and your ISO. And they're all related. Aperture is the opening in your camera lens that lets light in. And aperture is controlled by something called f-stop, which is short for focal stop. The larger the f-stop, the smaller the aperture, and the less light will come through. The smaller the f-stop, the wider the aperture, and the more light will come through. To keep your background out of focus, you want to let a lot of light in. That means you want to select a small f-stop. Got that? If that isn't totally clear, just scroll back and rewatch this part. I know it seems like a bad math equation, but I promise it isn't that bad. I mean, I still have nightmares about math exams, but never about apertures. Next, select your shutter speed. Shutter speed and aperture are related. Since a wider aperture lets more light in, you need to offset that by choosing a faster shutter speed, like 1 250th of a second or faster. If you choose a slower shutter speed, like 1 60th of a second, your aperture will be open longer, which lets more light in, which also risks overexposing your photo. Finally, set your ISO. ISO controls how sensitive the image sensor is to light. Increasing ISO increases the sensor sensitivity to light. So it's basically like adding fake light that isn't really there. So photos taken with higher ISOs look brighter, but they also look grainier. The lowest ISO setting is usually around 100, so start by setting it there. Then you can jack up the ISO and see what happens. Just don't go so far that the quality suffers. All right, iPhone people, it's your turn. So prior to the iPhone 7 Plus, depth was super difficult to create on a camera phone because the background was always in focus, and this made blurring apps necessary. But then the iPhone 7 Plus entered our lives and made it possible for us iPhone photogs to take truly stunning photos. The beauty of newer iPhones is a little something called portrait mode. Portrait mode is available on every iPhone 7 Plus and newer. It uses machine learning to blur the background and create DSR-like photos. So to do it, open your camera app and select portrait mode. If you're using the iPhone 8 Plus or later, a little cube icon will appear at the bottom of your screen. Select natural light. 
This is the basic lighting mode that portrait mode uses and will keep your subject in focus while blurring the background. Once you're comfortable with natural light mode, you can play around with the studio light mode, which will make your subject brighter, and the contour light mode, which will cast shadows on your subject. If the message move farther away appears at the top of your screen, slowly move your phone backward until the message goes away and you suddenly see the background blur. If you have to move the phone so far backward that you can see the edge of your surface by the time portrait mode kicks in, slowly move the phone forward until the surface edge is no longer in frame, but the background remains blurred. It's weird, but there really is this sweet spot. I'm not sure why it is, but portrait mode sometimes requires you to move pretty far away from your subject before it can blur the background. But then it allows you to move even further forward before the background pops back into focus. If that explanation sounds confusing, just try it for yourself and you will see what I mean. The photo on the left shows you what you'll get when you're too close for portrait mode to kick in. The one on the right was taken with portrait mode active. Once portrait mode is active, tap your subject on the screen to put it into focus. A box with a sun icon next to it will appear wherever you tapped. Drag the sun icon up and down to change the exposure, which is the brightness of your photo. When you like what you see on the screen, just snap your photo. Editing in a program like Adobe Lightroom is optional, but highly encouraged. The photo on the left is the exact one I took on my iPhone in this massively bright room, and the photo on the right is the edited version. It's truly amazing what a little editing can do for overall brightness. And that's how you create depth. So just go create some, and then comment below and let me know how it went. Oh, and make sure you like and subscribe. I have got a lot more how-to videos coming, and I don't want you to miss a single one. And if you like reading words more than you like watching videos, this same how-to is also available in blog form on the Replica Services website. I'll pop a link below.